manipulate the exercise? If I'm taught that this is a lunge and I can have a few basic lunges, why go through all this hassle? Well, there's a couple of really key important answers to that question that are very valuable that have already been answered in some of the other discussions that we've had. Michelle Dalport has answered one, and Dr. Roy Sherman has answered some, and obviously with Dr. Chris Thompson, talking about the older adult population has been a massive impact. So let's talk about some of those and start with what Roy Sherman talked about. When I triangulate something, when I manipulate the exercise, what I can immediately do is create novelty. Novelty is a newness. It's something presented to the body that it's not used to or very familiar with doing. And so if I triangulate something, if someone is used to doing this, and all of a sudden I change it to this, or I change it to this, within their ability, so keeping it within their sphere of function, meaning I don't go too far out distance-wise, or too high or too low verticality-wise, when I do that, I create novelty, that creates a challenge to the body, and that immediately turns the brain and switches the cognitive function of the brain on. Also, what we know through research is when I have something that is challenging, challenging doesn't mean it's so difficult I can't do it, challenging means it's something that is new novelty, it's something that I'm not familiar with and used to doing, and it's stimulating, and it's making me have to work to overcome it, which is how we learn. When we do movements that way, it actually helps us to, or it makes time fly, to be very simple. And that's an indication of enjoyment. Have you ever been somewhere and you're like, man, that's already done? My workout's already over? That concert's already done? My time's already up? That means that you've had a sense of enjoyment. The time flew, it went by really fast. So we can create enjoyment when we create novelty because we get wrapped up in what we're doing. We're actually learning, and that's part of the experience. That's a powerful association for a trainer to apply to their workout. If they're starting to do novel movements, you've kicked the brain online, you've made that person have to work, and you've either brought them out of a funk or kept them from going into one with your workout, meaning you kept them from falling asleep in your workout. But now you've revived them and refreshed them. So you create a sense of cognitive awareness. You create this kind of time frame, which is this, this shrinking of the time frame, so to speak, which makes people feel like they've enjoyed something, they've accomplished something. A sense of accomplishment, a sense of stimulation, and a sense of enjoyment. Extremely powerful, all simply by just triangulating and using simple concepts that we just talked about. So here's a real simple, real simple tool. All I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the ball, and again, the ball is going to triangulate her. I just throw it where I want it, and she has to catch it. So I can change the distance that she travels from her body, I can change the height at which she has to move, and all she has to do is return it. But you can see that she's smiling, and she's got a little bit of a giggle factor going on, which is what we want. So all I'm going to do is play, and then I can bounce it. So now she has to concentrate on reacting to where the ball bounces, and it allows you to grab it, and now she's trying to <laughs> get me. The next one is very powerful as well from a physical standpoint. So one was more of the, the, the mental capacity, which obviously affects the body, we know. And the other was from a physical standpoint, which we already have talked about affects the mental. When we change how we move, different heights, different directions, different distances from the body, when we change those, we affect how force is distributed through the system.
So if I lunge here every single time, my body and my tissues adapt. Now remember, tissue adaptation occurs in bone, it occurs in muscle, it occurs in connective tissue, all of the, the fascial connective tissue. It occurs in adipose tissue, it occurs in neural tissue. Every tissue of the body adapts to whatever you place upon it, said principle. So if I only do one basic pattern of motion, and it's always to the same height, the same distance in the same direction, or predominantly in those, my tissues will strengthen in that, but as soon as I go outside of that, my tissues no longer have the health and strength and have no longer formed or fashioned to handle stress in those other areas. So I actually create weaker tissue everywhere else that's not being used. But if I can triangulate, change the height, change the distance, change the directions that I move, every time I do that, my tissues have to adapt to that stress. And I don't know how, how that's sinking in, I don't know how that sounds, but if you stop and think about that, if I change what I do, the tissues have to change with me and the tissue health grows. When connective tissue is placed under lines of force, under force, it's certain angulations, which, which Scholl talked about, the variable, the vector variability. When I change the variability of the vectors, how forces are being transferred into my system, my connective tissue will lay down the network that maps to that. So every time I do that, I create this remapping physiologically of the tissues in my body. Motor unit recruitment is also enhanced by that. Bone structure and the trabeculae within the bone, the structure within the bone, is enhanced by that. So by using triangulation, specific to acute variables, I can massively impact how my body will adapt to the exercises that I perform, to what I do. And I can use any exercise in triangulation. We had a challenge recently about taking a dumbbell shoulder press and triangulating it. That becomes extremely powerful. If you didn't join in, please feel free to join in. We'll leave it up for a little longer. But also try it on yourself. If I take dumbbells, and instead of just doing this the whole time, if I go slightly forward in front of me, feel how that changes the force distribution all the way down through your superficial back row. If I stand here and I go off to the side, Feel how that changes the force distribution through your whole lateral line, through your system. If I rotate, feel how that changes. Watch my feet as I go through here and I rotate this way. That changes what happens from my hand all the way down to my foot. I can go out to the side, so both hands are going away this way. I can go here, I can go here, I can go out, I can rotate. I can go as far as I can forward, I can go back. By doing that, I change force distribution, and I change the fun factor, I change excitement. The key is, who is your client, what is their bubble today, and how can I maximize that experience so when they leave, they've changed. That's all taken care of in our advanced course. We show you how to manipulate all those variables to make it specific for each individual. When you use PTA global information in education and you start bringing in games and the interaction, the personal interaction between trainer and client, now you maximize the whole fun factor, the mind-body experience, and how the tissues respond. I want to show you a very simple concept. So we first have Jessica just doing a simple chest, simple chest press. So your traditional chest press, boom, boom, boom. Great exercise, has a lot of valuable tools to it. And I can change her actual drivers, which we haven't talked about, but I'm going to have her go alternating arm. So now I have her doing just an alternating arm chest press, which is great. But now if I apply the concept of triangulation to it, I can take her and create a whole new experience for her, both mentally and physically, and it would look something like, okay, so where my hand goes, her hand goes. So now I can triangulate that and have her go in a variety of different distances from her body, way up here, way up here, or I can have her go in different heights. And down, and down. Okay. We can go out a little bit different directions, so it's not always anterior, it might be somewhat anterior lateral. I can keep the height. And so very simply, it just looks 
like that. That was fun. I like that. Yeah, I'm going to go through and give you another example on triangulation, show you what it looks like using another more traditional exercise. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to use a squat. I'll show you a more interactive way that you can get your clients to squat. Now I have a medicine ball, so you can use medicine balls, which work really well because they roll and they can be handled. I'm going to simply roll the ball to Jessica, and she has to squat down and pick it up. Only the caveat here is that as she squats down, the ball's not going to come directly to her. She's going to have to go where the ball goes to squat. So I'm going to end up triangulating her just by where the ball is placed. Ready, Jessica? Ready. Okay. So I have her come a little bit more lateral. She squats and then rolls it back to me. I can go different directions. I can change the distance so I can make her reach out to the side by keeping her feet in place. And you notice she was laughing and smiling. I can change my direction and roll it more to her side and now she has to begin to rotate. So I can create more rotation. I can get her to reach farther forward. So I can triangulate that squat. What about traditional things that I don't have a medicine ball, or I don't want to use a medicine ball, or my client's petrified of medicine balls, which are all possible. You can do the same thing where someone can squat with a dumbbell, only it's just where you place the dumbbell that now changes the triangulation or the, stre the stress or force distribution through the body. So now Jessica, as you squat down, where are my hands go, or where are you going to reach the dumbbells? Okay. So wherever my hands are, she has to touch my hands with the dumbbells. Okay. So go here. So I can change the height of how she squats based upon where I place my hands. Okay? So you can see that I automatically triangulate her depending on what I'm doing. So I can still use dumbbells, I can still use Hopefully that wasn't belaboring. Hopefully you realize that triangulation is just a series of coordinates, three different dimensions. Not the same as planes of motion, it's very distinctly different. It has the ability to progress and regress the exercises, shrink or expand your sphere of function, your bubble, and it has a massive impact on the mind and body. Thank you for taking time to be with us. Thank you for joining us in this triangulation series through the Up Close and Personal video series that we're doing. We hope you have a great time. We look forward to seeing you soon.